what can give Ethereum a second wind, which would let it stop being just an altcoin? The primary DeFi services operate on the basis of Ethereum, and it's no surprise that even Vitalik Buterin believes in their success. Whoever first offers the product for mass use is gonna win. A huge team is trying to accomplish something that no one has ever done before. Glad to welcome you to the CoinPost channel. When I started making this video, they would give $171 for one Ethereum, and it showed growth by as much as 12%. You could say it happens, if not for two bots. Firstly, Bitcoin also grew the day before, leading the market again. Secondly, there were times when, for Ethereum, they would give as much as $1400. But these times are almost forgotten. And if Bitcoin managed to hit nearly 14,000 after the cryptozim ended, Ethereum couldn't make it up to $400. So why is the second largest cryptocurrency by capitalization so far behind Bitcoin? The reason may be that Ethereum at 1400 owes it not only to the Bitcoin going to the moon, but also to high demand for the cryptocurrency by Vitalik Buterin due to the boom in the ICO market. They had billions there and the leading platform was Ethereum. But the ICO bubble burst and its revival in the form of IEO never happened. Maybe it's the money that Ethereum lacks in now. How to replace it then? In this video, I'd like to talk about what can give Ethereum a second wind, which would let it stop being just an altcoin, albeit with the largest capitalization. Let's talk about the development of the decentralized finance market, decentralized app industry and of course about the transition to the Ethereum 2.0 format, which should make it a global computer. I'd like to ask all our new viewers to click the subscribe button and join our community. And to our regular viewers, thank you for being with us. Let's begin. The decentralized finance market began to emerge in the fall of 2017, but nobody cared about it then, because Bitcoin was flying to the moon, altcoins were increasing at an incredible pace, and on ICOs you could make 10, 100 or more access without even getting an understanding of the project. They started taking decentralized finance seriously only towards the end of 2019. And when in mid-February 2020 the total value of funds blocked in DeFi applications exceeded a billion dollars, they immediately began to call them the future of the cryptocurrency industry. According to the DeFi Pulse website, there are 25 major services that account for $745 million, and among them there is their own Bitcoin in terms of market dominance. And it's the Maker project which accounts for 49% of all the funds. Using these services you can deposit cryptocurrency, get loans, trade, place bets on various events and more. Decentralized finance is, in some way, an extension of the Bitcoin which was supposed to be an alternative payment system, in which there would be no banks. And DeFi services went further and offered the same services as banks but in the crypto sphere and on the condition that a user retains full control over their funds. The primary DeFi services operate on the basis of Ethereum, and it's no surprise that even Vitalik Buterin believes in their success. Well, or at least he's counting on it, because if they start buying Ethereum to access this market, as it used to take part in the ICO, then the business is gonna work out well. But on March the 12th, along with the cryptocurrency market collapse, there was the halving of funds in DeFi applications, accompanied by failures and liquidations. And now a class action lawsuit has been filed against the leading Maker Foundation service, demanding $28 million compensation. It's clearly not good for the market, because it undermines confidence in it, but it's possible to go through these problems. Besides, we should not forget about regulation. In the US, there was a precedent when a decentralized exchange was accused of operating without a license, and the chief developer was put on trial as its head. And as the American SEC is now actively grinding ICO, and even Pavel Durov has not yet been able to beat them, then they can take on decentralized finance. But there are good and most importantly very significant factors, such as zero or negative rates on bank deposits in the leading countries of the world. Not everyone is ready to spend their money actively, it's much more enjoyable to get passive income, and deposits used to be the most popular way. Now that they have virtually disappeared, people will be looking for an alternative. So if in cryptocurrencies they continue to pay the interest regularly, 
new users are gonna join the industry with their money without a doubt. And we're moving on to the decentralized applications. And I'm sorry for constantly repeating those words. It's not me who came up with the name, and if it jars your ears, imagine how challenging it is for my tongue. And at this very moment, our author is quietly gloating somewhere. Alright, let's not get carried away, otherwise I'm gonna like it and start begging you for likes. And you're gonna resent me in the comments. Let's just take a look at the top decentralized apps. As we can see, in the top 5, if you rank projects by the number of active users, we have only one application on the Ethereum blockchain. And in the first 20 of them, we have only 4. And while Ethereum still has the largest army of fans and developers, EOS, Tron and other platforms are now winning the battle for the decentralized application market, due to faster and cheaper transactions. It just so happens that for ordinary users, the main thing is the usability and all sorts of decentralization, reliability and other right words are a secondary concern. We can assume that after the launch of the Ethereum version 2.0, the brainchild of Vitalik Buterin is gonna become competitive again, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. In the meantime, I'd like to discuss what the decentralized application market is like today and what are its prospects. As I see it, everything is pretty bad out there because in fact, it's a sandbox for bored crypto investors that in anticipation of going to the moon, from time to time spend some coins on obscure purchases of game tokens or lose them in a crypto casino. And for those who are not in crypto, this market is not attractive at all, because traditional games are many times better. They still haven't come up with some super useful decentralized programs, and don't forget about the entry threshold too. Indeed, in order to get access to the service, I have to own a specific cryptocurrency platform, set a crypto wallet, figure out how it all works. So why would an average person need it? If, be it work or leisure, he has simple centralized alternatives where it's enough to use your email address to sign up. In this regard, the decentralized finance market is much more attractive because it provides opportunities that banks cannot offer now. And for this reason, it's too early to write off the Ethereum in this segment. Because, as I mentioned earlier, whoever first offers the product for mass use is gonna win. In the meantime, developers of decentralized applications only copy the centralized originals without adding anything to them that would force users to switch to blockchain platforms. The long-awaited Ethereum 2.0 is getting closer, but still is not ready. Last year, there were rumors that the developers would launch the so-called Zero Phase on January the 3rd, 2020. That is, on the birthday of Bitcoin. But all this remained just rumors, and now they're saying that the launch is scheduled for July the 30th, that is, on the birthday of Ethereum itself. We know for sure that Ethereum 2.0 specification is ready, but during its audit, they identified several vulnerabilities that the project team should now fix. But this is a normal workflow. This is what Audit is for. To find problems at the documentation stage and not after the launch of the main system. In addition, Vitalik Buterin and other leading developers have repeatedly pointed out that despite the total readiness of the project, they won't start the initial phase until they thoroughly check it in the test network using all the main clients. I still hope that this event is gonna take place this year. However, the developers are definitely not gonna be in a hurry. Because as the study shows, the Ethereum reached parity with Bitcoin on the transferred value. In many ways, this result is caused by a significant increase in stablecoin transactions in the Ethereum blockchain. And it's unlikely that Buterin and the company will dare to abandon these financial flows just to update the platform quickly. Besides, according to the topic of this video, I want to point out that the news about the upcoming Ethereum 2.0 has almost no effect on the cryptocurrency price. As a rule, in young projects, each of the developers gives away to the exchange rate, and people buy, because look, they took another step towards the promised finished product. And then a huge team is trying to accomplish something that no one has ever done before, and switch the operating and popular blockchain platform with the second capitalization after Bitcoin on the market to another algorithm. But nobody really cares. Such indifference of crypto investors will likely remain that way. 
until they are told it's time to buy ASAP to make money on stocking tomorrow. That's when we'll get the buzz. Let's sum up. If you look for reasons for the increase in the Ethereum price, then I'd give first place to a possible increase in demand for the decentralized finance market. Then comes the launch of Ethereum 2.0, but I mean the launch of the updated platform and not the news about taking another step into the light. And lastly, we have decentralized applications, although there is little hope there. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching the Coin Post channel. Subscribe and get enlightened.